It's back to school season again. Usually I'm very excited during this time of the year. It's always very nice to go back to the campuses to hang out with friends and the school gym is open. Even though I have graduated, I still pay for alumni fee. I still use the school rec center because that's like the best gym ever. I love studying. If studying pays a salary, I will take it as a full-time job. I love being on the camp. I just love to hang out in the library sometimes. But this year, the back to school season is a little bit different because of the current pandemic a lot of the schools are doing fully online at least for the first a few weeks of the semester so in today's video I want to share some of my tips and advice previously I learned from teaching and studying fully online are you ready let's get started <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Ming's channel. This is Miss Ming and my channel I do vlog videos, lifestyle videos, foodie videos, and study videos. For the current job I used to teach at the university I studied at, I taught graduate courses fully online and personally I took a lot of graduate level courses fully online. And also a very interesting experience I had was uh, when I was 13 in the first year of middle school in China, actually there was an epidemic happening in China and I was actually in the epidemic center of Beijing during that time so I spent the whole semester of my first year in middle school fully online and honestly I learned so much and that was actually the best schooling experience so in today's video I hope to share some of my experience and tips to you guys as usual I made some notes so that I don't ramble too much actually studying or learning is actually a social practice we learn through going to classes we learn through interacting with teachers and students so learning by ourselves can be a little bit lonely and I understand that it could be a struggle if this is the first time you have to take all your courses online so the first tip I want to give you is to make sure you email your professor your teaching assistant or your grader at the very beginning of the semester to establish a relationship um, this happened a lot in a sense that I previously had students who actually never knew my email and at the very end of the semester they had a incident and they had to communicate with me to ask for extension and then email the wrong person and I never got the email and there were miscommunications and things like that and also I know that some professors do reply emails really really fast but other professors may reply a little bit slower because they have other responsibilities or they are teaching too many classes so we usually don't know our expectations are unless we already establish this relationship so at the very beginning of the semester make sure you email your professor try to introduce yourself maybe if you have any concerns about learning fully online communicate that concern beforehand uh, maybe just send an email say hey uh, it's very nice to meet you online virtually I'm very excited to take this course this is my background I'm a little bit nervous about certain things on the syllabus um, but I'm sure I'll do great I hope to uh, make sure that I know your email and how long it usually takes for you to reply my email um, so that we can can establish this communication. Usually I'm really happy to see a student reaching out like that um, because I felt like they're really motivated to learn. Usually professors, they prefer to have communications with you and if there is a teaching assistant or a grader in your class, make sure you also email your teaching assistant and grader because oftentimes your teaching assistant will be the one that helps you to answer your emails. So try to send an email to your professor and teaching assistant so they know you, they know personally you. So even though you're not sitting in the classroom physically, they know this is you and they know your personality, they know your learning styles, they know that you're motivated. Second tip is to communicate any potential problem before they become an issue. As a previous lecturer at the university, we don't like surprises. We don't like to hear that like all of a sudden something happens and because we're not prepared to help you. So if there would be an issue, like if you have internet issues, if your computer has an issue, or if you have a lot of family responsibilities, try to communicate that issues to your professor before it becomes an issue. Maybe they can give you some advice to help. For example, some students of mine previously were missing deadlines, and later I found out because they didn't have a computer, and sometimes they couldn't make it to the library because library is not 24 seven during the weekend. So 
After I found out about that, I told the student, hey, you can check out a computer in our college. And it's not in the library, it's in the college. There's a different college lab. And they actually allow you to check out a computer for the whole semester with everything you needed. And the student didn't know about that until it became an issue, but, but the students already missed a lot of deadlines. So make sure you communicate any potential problems that you had to prevent you from having a great semester. And maybe your professors or teaching assistant can actually help you. Um, if not, at least they're aware that maybe you will miss one or two deadlines by a day because you have five kids taking online courses at home at the same time. Sometimes the professors will kindly give you an extension of a day if it was communicated in advance instead of you missing it and trying to find excuse um, to justify it. So always communicate them before they became an issue. Previously, I talked about that learning and studying is actually a social practice. You're not just like trying to learn on your own. You're actually socializing with other people through different mediation tools. These tools could be computer, online blogs, online videos. You're learning things that are created by other people. And a lot of times I know people, although they study alone or they self-study, they go on blogs, they try to ask questions. Uh, so these are all considered social interactions. So the next tip I want to tell you is is actually the tip that I used about 17 years ago when I was 13. So I was 13, I was poor, our family didn't have internet access. So all of the materials had to be shared from a friend. As a result, I actually had a study partner and that eventually really helped me a lot. We discussed different subjects, we answered each other's questions, we uh, tried to remind each other of the incoming deadline. I learned from my own experience during a teenager, during the epidemic, when I was 13, long, long time ago, was that when when you are studying online at home when everything is fully online, it's very, very, very essential to have a study partner. Daily, you will find one, two, three study partners or study groups. I don't think it's good to have a big group, honestly, um, because sometimes when you have too many, sometimes there's drama or distraction. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I do prefer an intimate group of three to four. The benefit of having a study group is that studying is no longer both because you can actually text each other when you're studying. Hey, this is the study time. You can pretend that you're having a class time and making sure everybody is studying for two hours together. And later you can answer each other's questions. Another great thing about it is that sometimes when we go into the class and then you hear people talking about assignments and then you realize you forgot that that assignment actually was there. And that was a great reminder. But now you're alone studying online. It's kind of weird that you don't get to be reminded of class assignments. But the nice thing about having a study group is that you can actually talk about assignments and you know, oh no, there's assignment for that class? I totally didn't remember. But hey, your friends are gonna help you, remind you, and keep you accountable. So highly recommend. It's really, really fun when you're studying with each other, even though you're studying at home. Reaching out to some of your classmates. If you don't have to reach out, you can actually ask the professor. And also if you have Canvas or if you have um, Blackboard, there is actually a column on the side that has the class users and you can find your professor's email and you can also find other people's email in the class users so depending on what school system you use but you can find your contact you can contact three or four people and to see who actually responded number four is communication communication is the key actually virtually in everything but when it comes to virtual learning communication is the most important thing because you want to communicate carefully, effectively, efficiently, clearly with your professor. Um, if you don't understand the class uh, class assignments, if you don't understand the requirements, make sure you communicate, you ask um, your professor and other classmates, and also communicate with other classmates um, effectively as well so that you can work in groups for some of the projects. So, okay, we know communication is the key, but how to effectively communicate in a virtual learning environment? First of all, um, when you email your professor, make sure you write it in a nice, respectful way, in a clear way. Do not just write one line of a sentence, hey, where is this? Hey, I don't understand this assignment. Um, hey, it's, it's hard. 
to reply to a question like that. And also, it can be a little bit annoying as a professor when you receive a rude email like that. So try to email a professor or something like this.、Um, Dear professor so and so, I really enjoy your class so far. I love the readings and so and so.、Um, now I have a question about this assignment. You can actually copy some text and highlight the part that you don't understand and ask a question.、Um, so. Do you require me to do A, or do you prefer me to do B, or should I do C? And as a professor, it's easier to answer questions like that. And when you tell the professor, "Hey, I enjoy your class content so far, but I have this confusion of this one little content or assignment," it motivates the professor to help you a little bit more. That's a trick when you communicate with a professor. Always clarify with your professor. If you if your professor gives you a vague answer, always clarify. But clarify. Um, in a very respectful way, you can say, "Oh, thank you so much for your response. Thank you so much for your timely response.、Um, I just want to ask a further question. So just be careful and always clarify. If you felt like the professor's answers are kind of vague in general, try to ask a follow-up question by thanking them first, and then ask them a clarified question. Next one is to how to communicate with your classmates. I love to use Facebook groups. I also love to use Use Gmail group chat.、Um, both are really good. I like to use Zoom, but with Zoom you kind of have to schedule a conference.、Um, so I definitely use Zoom a lot because it has a lot of cool features in video conferencing. But if you're just chatting when studying, I definitely prefer Google Chat.、Um, if you have a Gmail, there's a feature is Google Chat. You can also download the app called Google Hangout. You can call people. You can video call. You can voice call, and you can actually chat. Them with questions, and people can answer with their phone or with their email. So it's just on the left side of your Gmail. It's very, very, very useful. You can add people first. By studying a group, and they have to confirm it, and then you can chat with each other. I can do calls.、Um, so, for example, if my coworker is calling me, even though I'm not in front of my computer, I will receive that call with my phone, Google Hangout app, and I will answer it. So, it's definitely a really nice tool to communicate. Having a Facebook group, having a Gmail group,、um, or having another text group,、um, it's always easy to com- communicate with each other. Lastly, when I was a lecturer at a university. Sometimes we had group projects where my students disagreed with each other.、Uh, with that, just keep in mind that nothing is personal. If there is a member in your group disagreed with you, but it felt like.、Um, Your idea may be more fit to the assignment itself. First of all, you have to understand any group projects. You have to compromise here and there. And others is like try to say things nicely. So one of the trick in that communication style is to first validate somebody else's opinion or somebody else's work. First, tell them they did a great job. You like their idea and things like that. Second, try to propose your idea in a question format. Don't just say like. Do I do? Do I do? You can do this. You can do that. You could say, "Hey, do you think we can do this? Hey,、uh, what about we try this?、Uh, what about we do this?"、Um, I definitely learned it the hard way because English is not my first language. In Chinese, the same sentence doesn't sound as straightforward and rude, but sometimes native speakers they will get mad. They will. If you want to do it, you do it. So personally, I would ask a person, "Hey,、uh, maybe you can do this. Maybe you can do that." In Chinese, it would be totally fine. In my mind, it would be totally fine. But for some reason, it was kind of offensive to my groupmate. I totally didn't understand why. But later, people explained to me that the way I went with it was like it was so straightforward. It was like. Telling people what to do. Nobody likes to be told in terms of what to.、Do. Uh, people like when, when they think that it's their idea. So try to propose it in a question, and they think, oh, it's a great idea. Let me do it. So it's like they want to do it,、um, based on the question. 
So this is definitely something I learned the hard way. I did not know that when I first started my study, but it's very effective. First, validate a great job. Second, try to propose your idea in a question format uh, instead of telling people what to do. Tip number five is to structure your day. Before this pandemic, when you were actually physically going to school, you wake up this time, you drive, you get your food, um, you maybe get a coffee at Starbucks, you talk to your friend, and then the class starts, and then you go to another class and then you take a break and then it's lunchtime and then you hang out with your friends after lunch do some homework in the afternoon and go into a 3 p.m. class and then you come back and then you have dinner and maybe you hang out with your roommates so just imagine your routine when you were physically on campus just imagine it and try to reproduce that when you are actually virtually working or studying from home so try to establish this routine try to replicate the routine of physically going to school is going to be helpful now we're back to school virtually again try to mimic the back to school season of last year like try to establish your routine instead of driving to work you can go for a walk in the neighborhood it just gives you this structure of oh i'm actually working or studying and it actually helps you to be more productive so establish this routine actually let me know what's your back to school routine comment down below and maybe we can try it out tip number six is to use google calendar or um, your phone reminder or your apple calendar to set up reminders of the deadlines um, if you're taking more than three classes this semester it's so easy to miss all the deadlines sometimes we miss a deadline because it's not fully structured because you may have a deadline in week three and in week four and then in week seven and then week eight so different courses have different projects set up a reminder set up a deadline reminder in your actual calendar is very very nice so if you have a deadline on this day put a deadline right here so you know that's the day you have to submit and also give yourself a reminder like two to three days before the deadline so that you don't oh my gosh i have to submit something today you can say oh i have something due in three days i totally forgot about it but here is my reminder so we're good to go. Tip number seven is to have a planner or to-do list to write everything down. Um, I talked about this over and over again. Just write down everything. I know we like to believe that we have good memory, but just imagine this. There's so many things going on in your life. You're living in your parents' house or living in your boyfriend's house or living with your kids. You have animals running around when you're like writing your homework and then your kids start to ask for food. Or later, your mom came here to ask you to help her with something. One solution is to literally write down everything. You can write down on sticky notes. You can write them down on a planner. You can also use... Um, iPhone notes uh, but always write everything down because hey it's so easy to forget about things when there's so many distractions so write down everything this is also a tip regardless if you are working at home but I felt like I do remember things better when I go to school I see the same people and then I see oh you just remind me that we're supposed to do something for a group project but now you're not physically seeing them you may actually completely forget so just try to write everything down it's going to be a good advice especially when you're at my number eight is to make a study plan and stick to it um study plan is very 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 important uh i don't know if everybody has one because your syllabus is usually your study plan so on your syllabus it usually says on week one to three you're learning in week four to six you're learning this week seven is learning this and week eight is learning this well okay that's the study plan of the whole syllabus of the whole semester but you kind of need a study plan in terms of how you progress in terms of each module so within the week of one two three you're working on module one um on which day you're studying what content within module one is a key question so your study plan should be very 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 um, specific to the specific day and even to the hour i know this could be a little bit annoying it feels like we're spending too much time planning instead of studying but hey it really helps us to keep on track beginning it may be very time consuming making a study plan though so because if you're not used to it it could be something really new you have to think about what should i be planned for 
Her body styling plan maybe is in different styles. Some people are more time based, and some people maybe more task based. But try to have a plan and try to try out your plan for the first two through two to three weeks to see if it works. If it doesn't, always modify it because everybody's study plan is actually somewhat different, um, depending on your learning style. So, but try to make one. It's gonna be helpful in the long term. Number nine, deadlines are really hard to keep. Sometimes we do miss a deadline, but if you know that you're gonna miss a deadline, make sure you communicate with your partners, your group mates, or your professors beforehand. Always try to communicate immediately when anything happens instead of waiting later and it's kind of hard to explain afterhand. Okay, so the last tip is to look for online resources, blogs, um, study groups, and things like that. I feel like long time ago, I was a person that I felt like if I don't know about something, I just don't know about something. And there are always things that you can't find online, of course, but um, if you have any questions, um, there are a lot of online resources to look for and try to utilize them. Especially now, we're all using internet there's so many blogs, um, there are different apps and Quizlets, and there are also different um, Twitters and uh, subgroups and things like that to talk about certain topic that you're studying. So try to um, search for online resources to enrich your learning, um, try to extend your learning, and sometimes it answers your questions faster than your professor. Also, because there's so many different online resources, it's kind of hard to tell which one are better than the others. So if you're not sure, you can always email, email a professor or you can always email your teaching assistant to see, hey, I found all of these. Um, I wonder which one would be the better ones to use. I'll greatly appreciate your help. I'm trying to extend, enrich my learning with um, more resources. And a lot of times my students found so many of them and I asked them permissions. Hey, do you mind if I share it with other classmates in this class? These are really useful. Actually, um, it's really great when everybody is sharing things that it can help. So that's why I also like to use Facebook Facebook group because you can actually have a private Facebook group that um other people cannot see you, so you protect your uh, everybody's identity. It's by like invite only, and you can share their links and resources there. Um, it's always like really great to use these platforms in a way that help us learning. All right, that's it for today. I hope today's video can be helpful to you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, and also comment down below like what is your best tips for online learning. All right, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also ring the notification bell. Um, there is a variety of content in this channel including lifestyle vlog and things like that so check them out um all right that's it for today thumbs up subscribe ring the bell and have a great semester bye happy learning i'm always very excited around this time of the year what hey simba hi oh Okay. I was very excited during this time of the year because I love school if studying pays a salary. Oh. I don't know what the cat is doing right now.